Hi, I'm Sasha. I'm Dave. This is Gilbert. And um, this is our cube van. We started out with just a regular cube band shelf. The biggest job was welding in the steel doors in the back because we got rid of the roll-up door. It's, uh, it gave us a lot more space and it's a lot nicer to be able to open it all up, but it still keeps it kind of incognito from the back, so it still looks like a moving truck. All the walls are just uh, like a nicer plywood. You can just buy a, a plywood that you can stain, so you, don't, you can have a nice finish on it and actually see the wood grains and stuff. Fully insulated it with inch and a half insulation. Uh, prior to insulating it, we painted the whole entire inside of the truck with like a, a silicone based paint just to add a little bit of extra sealing, a little bit of vapor barrier, and then insulated and then spray foamed and then taped over all of the seams so it's it holds pretty well in here. Airtronic D2, it's called it's a diesel fired heater. So it wasn't that bad to install. Uh, did like just a four inch hole in the floor, and then you have to run an intake and an exhaust, and then you have to tap it into the fuel tank. But uh, these. Uh, on the commercial trucks there's often a tap in the fuel tank already for a secondary tank if you want to put one on so i literally just <laughs> plugged it on i didn't have to drill any holes or anything in the fuel tank yeah and it's awesome it'll run on a one gallon or 15 hours on, on four gallon. gallon no 15 one hours gallon. on one gallon <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it takes less than um less than a marker light in electricity so the the stove that we picked up we hunted for a lot of different ones First off, whenever you see RV stove, you're adding about $1,000 to anything that you want to buy. Uh, when I found this one, it was at Bass Pro. Propane, it's, it runs off a of one liter propane in the back. You don't really have a temperature control, but the oven works awesome. You get about seven hours, so about 350 degrees on one liter propane. And one of the biggest benefits of it is when we're cooling the truck in the summertime, we can pull the stove right out and cook on the picnic table or keep the cold inside of the truck and go cook outside because we're outside most of the time anyway. And then I, we built it on the shelf just so you can get the propane on and then we just strap it when we're done. Oh, the space back too, so for all of our cooking. That's what we love about like we have a full functioning kitchen. We've got the oven and the stove. We bake, we cook whatever we like. And there's a marine foot pump and then we've got these two jugs here. So one's a gray water and then we've got extra extra drugs we keep here so we fill these up with water and then we just swap them out so we didn't want to go with too big of a reservoir because yeah. when it's when it's a holding tank like that and it's not sealed and underneath the truck you can get some smells so we we do put a little bit of bleach or something just to kill bacteria in our yeah. in our holding tank but we only have like 20 liters in those containers so between the two yeah. of us and washing our faces and doing and dishes and stuff like that. We go through by. it pretty fast. There's a, a decent filter on the inside, so there's no chunks or anything that actually goes into the gray water. So we can dump it in the, in the toilet or something like that. So we've got both fritzer and fridge. And then, um, yeah, we got these benches, everything we made a use of. So like, we didn't want to fill up our van with like a bunch of shelves and a bunch of storage. So we just got kind of the essentials. We're like, okay, we're gonna need a table. We're gonna need some chairs. So we just got these from Ikea with clouds or just space that we can put and stuff it's all, in. Everything that is here is all removable. Yeah. So we can actually make an L-shaped couch if we want to, yeah, or we, make we this can into move living it. Room and sometimes like we'll put this table down and then move this off to the side and then just have blankets and the doors open when the weather's nice so we can like we can change it up it's not always the same you know sometimes you want to change your apartment around like move a couch or something yeah the table is all leftover plywood from the walls so we just cut strips of it on uh on a table saw and then we beat the hell out of it with a chain just whipped it with a chain and then <laughs> stained it so it kind of looks like that that weathered look it was kind of a, one of the fun things to mm -hmm. do. We decided not to put any windows in, which we're actually happy about. This brings enough light, and then when we have the doors open, that's a lot of light too, but like we can be totally inconspicuous like this. Nobody nobody thinks twice about it, you know, nobody. It's just a white cube van. We play so music, so we've all got all of our recording music. gear and instruments in there. It took actually, I think, a decent amount of time to not get frustrated from the beginning moving into here. 
because everything moves, but everything has to go back exactly where it was because then things go way out of hand. Yeah, it gets <laughs> it gets it really, get really messy sometimes. really fast. <laughs> like the bed uh, is built out of cedar as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of messed the ceiling. It's just it's light, and strong, mm -hmm. and then uh, just for clothing storage and just like miscellaneous other storage underneath. Yeah, it's just another IKEA furniture special. The baskets. Once again, the music stuff, tools. It's really important to have as many tools as you can fit nicely with you all the time. Because chances are you're not in a brand new vehicle if you're starting something like this. Cupboards or baskets for clothes. Gilbert stuff. This was a learning curve. I never really did any solar or anything like that prior to this project. But it's actually really, really simple. It's it's not a hard setup. So this is from Canadian Tire. It's just a really simple setup. It's not the best inverter in the world, but it really it works well. The fan is a little bit loud overall, but it it's, like it, right now. it's worked so good so far. It's basically been turned on and not turned off for the last five months. The uh, charge controller for the solar system, I have two 335 watt panels up on the roof. Uh, I ran them in through the front of the cube van as like the wind deflector. So basically what I did was I built a snorkel inside of it and pulled it off and then ran all the wires and then put it back on. So you actually can't see any of the wiring from outside of the truck and it just kind of goes in on a 90. And it also, it's gonna stop water from being able to get in, which is really important. And then in here, we have have four deep cycle AGMs. The setup for the heater is here with the fuses. So it just runs, it basically just engages the controller and it runs very, very little energy for that. Uh, this is a smart battery separator. So what this does is allows the alternator from the truck to kick over once the outside battery's hit 13.2 volts and it'll charge my battery bank and vice versa with my solar system if the truck is not running and I'm in the sunshine. So that's really essential. We lived together in Vancouver. We were together for like two years here in Vancouver and we were paying a decent amount for an apartment. And we were both just working so much. And we, we adopted Gilbert and we kind of just came to a point where like we never spend any time with each other. We're always just working so much. I was doing sales and even on your days off, somebody always calls you and wants to meet you there and you have to go down and and deal with that however you need to, right? And it's like, what, what's the point of working so hard for a place that you don't spend any time in? Like we were gonna stay and we were thinking about, we're like, okay, well maybe we'll like buy a condo and, and um, you know, we'll try it out for a year. If we don't like it, we'll rent it out and then we'll go travel. And then we were looking, right? Yeah. And then we, we found one and we made an offer and we didn't get it because our dog was four inches too tall. And like <laughs> strata wouldn't make an exception that was that was the reason <laughs> that we didn't get that we were told we didn't get it so we're like how do, how do you own anything you know there are all of these rules you can't bring like certain you can't bring musical instruments into yeah. the building There's no musical instrument noise allowed it's like if yeah. i can't play guitar like, on the, in the condo that i yeah. that i'm paying for to buy <laughs> like come on so and and we play music so we're like okay well that just totally turned us off on wanting to buy anything at all built this whole thing for six thousand dollars less than what the down payment would have been and yeah. now we have no rent and then when we go play gigs we just drive wherever we need to because that's what we were thinking too like what if we get a gig in another province right we have to take time off work we need money to get there we need somewhere to stay we have all these instruments we have a dog right so this way we can go to all of those places at any time i work with a company called cooks for hire primarily we play music um, we have been playing a lot of gigs and building merch and selling merch and making videos. And and we've, been, we've been making leather stuff too and we try to get involved in lots of crafts. I, I work out with horses in Langley so we're like we're everywhere. Back and forth and we do a lot of custom made belts. Uh, I've been doing that for a couple years now. I started off with the chef knife kits. So it's a custom bison leather handmade roll for your knives specifically. So yeah, we dip our hands into a lot of different stuff. So I'd, I'd rather work like that and and pick and choose and... And have the freedom to do what we want. Yeah. Well, with any vehicle leaks and stuff like that, mechanical stuff is always going to be an issue because you don't have to make sure your house runs properly to get you to the next place or etc. Usually, especially if you're renting, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Every once in a while, if I have to put four or $500 into maintenance in the van, 
it's still a lot less than paying for rent in Vancouver, so it kind of balances itself out a little bit here and there. And I do most of the maintenance myself. I've done uh, the high pressure oil pump. I've rebuilt the fuel bowl on it. We've done like all the ball joints on it, and rebuilt the exhaust yeah. on it. You have to also get used to not showering. Like we don't have a shower in here. Yeah. So we don't like, I don't know. We, have, we have a hot water on demand that we shower outside of the back of the truck. But now it's cold. So yeah, cause we're planning cold. on going to Cali. <laughs> so in the warm weather, we're like, oh, well just like, you know, put the hot water on demand unit. But yeah, we shower at friends' places and at community, community center. center. Yeah. There's like- There's so many. It kind of just like stopped worrying a lot just about everything, about yeah. money also, in general. It's like, so stressful to worry about getting that new thing for your apartment or, or buying that new car, your monthly payments mm. on your truck and, and getting to work and paying for the port man when I was commuting every day in the rain. A nice commission job selling motorcycles. Like <laughs> that kind of, it all adds up to a lot of stress. And yeah. when we live like this, it's like, what do you have to worry about? It teaches you to not be wasteful. And it teaches you to, you know, really use the things you have and realize how much shit you don't need. It's hard because it's it kind of is like a, like a movement right now. There's a lot of people that are jumping on the bandwagon. It's, it, we've we've always been kind of like nomads like that, so it was it was a pretty easy transition for us. There's a lot of people that look at it and will do great on the weekends at it. But it's, it's not cut out for everybody. It's, it's not an easy, everyday lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that we have talked to that have decided to go for it, love it. And we're in the same boat. Mm -hmm. If you want to start building yourself, like you do need... You do uh, a lot of research. Even things like what type of insulation you use or how to put it on, like it's just so helpful, like instead of going through, because it's such a big job. So to just kind of like wing it and try to have to fix something later is like... Yeah. Don't rush it. We see a lot of people work their whole lives, pay for a house, and they sell all their stuff when they retire for half of what they bought it for and buy an RV and travel. <laughs> so we're just like, we should just do that now. <laughs> Whatever it is that you love to do, you can find a way to make money doing it. You know, there's always a way to make money doing it. You can always make sure that you are doing what you love. Really accept the fact that you're, you are taking a risk and it's going to take time before you get comfortable with like a drastic lifestyle change of picking up your life and moving into a cube van or or choosing a job that you're not making any money off for the first six months. Like you, some, if you really want to do something and you really love it, just do it. Uh, the music they can find at Sincerely Craig mm -hmm. um, as a website, Facebook or Instagram, it's all the same, Sincerely yeah. Craig. We actually got the, the name for the band because we met on Craigslist in <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> For our van life, the Van Life Chef is our Instagram handle. So mm -hmm. I've been in the industry since I was 12. All the recipes will be on YouTube of cooking out of the van, using mm -hmm. the small stove. We'll go forage mushrooms. I'll go catch fish. I'll show you how to smoke them. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe and ring that bell button. Right now, a playlist is popping up where you can actually continue watching on this channel all the alternative dwellings that I've had the pleasure of going and documenting. As well as I'd highly recommend you guys go check out my van build that I'm doing on my vlog channel. And the link to that is in the description as well. So thank you all for watching and stay tuned because every single Monday I upload a video here on this channel of another alternative dwelling at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'll see you guys then.